Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you for today's presentation about additive manufacturing, which you may also know as 3D printing. My name is Nikola Seid and I'm an application engineer for additive manufacturing working for the German company 3D Laserdruck that I'm representing today. In detail, I am part of the research and development department and I'm responsible for process optimization and quality issues. In today's talk, I will give a short overview about my company's range of services, quality standards and process know-how. And I'm really pleased to have the chance to speak in front of the aviation and aerospace industry because these branches have, have really high importance to our company. And therefore, I will guide through the whole presentation using projects that we made for these branches in the past. To start into the presentation, I'd like to give the word to one of our executive leaders, Mr. Tobias Wenz. He likes to welcome you by himself. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello as well, our participants of this year EATS in Bremen. My name is Tobias Wenz. I'm one of the CEO at 3D Laser Truck. Together with my business partner, Martin Hillinger, the 3D laser truck was founded in 2014. We were sure that the additive manufacturing will bring our production and services to the next step, and therefore we implemented 3D metals in our business. We are still, we are still totally convinced by the new type of manufacturing, and today we are happy to be able to offer the whole service range including 3D printing, surface and heat treatment, testing, medical, mechanical finishing and lots more. The aviation and aerospace industry is one of our main market. We have decided to have our quality standards according to aviation standards, which it's confirmed by our annual certification according to 9100. I wish you all an informative presentation and I hope we can get in contact soon. Best regards, Tobias Wenz. Bye bye. Thank you very much to our executive leader, Mr. Tobias Wenz. And first of all, before we go into the presentation, if there will be any questions while the presentation is on, don't hesitate to ask these questions within the chat function below. We will constantly answer your questions there. And after the presentation, of course, we have the chance to have a short discussion and answer your questions face to face. As you already heard, our company was founded in 2014. There are all in all 60 employees and the company is located in Reutlingen near Stuttgart that should be familiar to almost everybody. Our main industry sectors are automotive, aerospace and aviation, mechanical engineering industry and we also do motorsport. Within the past six years, we can look back on lots of really nice projects we had with our customers and we are sure that we could gain good and valuable experience and know-how over this time that brings us to the point where we are right now. You will now see a short clip of the production process of a part that we produced for the aerospace industry. This part will be mounted in a satellite and will fly to space soon. In the clip, you can see every production step, including the pre and post processing that we use around our laser powder bed fusion process. This is a view from above on our production site. We moved in there last year. For our production process, we usually start with a CAD step file that we get from the customers and afterwards we directly put this file into a FEM simulation to optimize the part for 3D printing. Then every part gets prepared for the production process individually. We put the parts on the base plates that we need for printing. 
At 3D Placerdruck, we use high quality machines from SLM Solution, which is also a German company. And we use the placer powder bed fusion process. This process gives us the possibility to build functional parts with good mechanical properties. And these mechanical properties that we achieve with this process or within this process are comparable to those of conventional production types. After the printing process, of course, we have a post processing. We cut the parts from the base plate and remove the support that we had attached on the parts, which you can see here in this footage pretty well. Of course, this is all made by hand, so it's handwork. And then we have the chance to blast the parts in different steps of blasting. We achieve high surface qualities without a mechanical finishing, but within our group of companies, we have the chance to do a mechanical finishing if the customer has this request. The following slide will give us an overview about the whole range of services that we offer at 3D LaserDruck. The video we've just seen already showed us some of them, but to fulfill all services that we offer, I want to point out that we also do heat treatment. We have an oven to do heat treatment to all kinds of parts and materials. We also offer a full testing if the customer has a request for uh, its project. And we also offer surface treatments, just like anodizing or painting of the parts to bring some examples. A really important point for us and also the reason why we are here today is that our quality is certified according to the quality standard 9100. So the aerospace and aviation branch is really important for us. And we also put our quality standards according to the requirements that we get from these branches. One last slide before we come back to the part that we saw in the video. Um, this slide, this overview shows us all the different materials that we are able to produce on our SLM printers. All in all, it's around 10 materials that we are able to produce. But here you can see our main materials. Those are tool steel or stainless steel. We have two types of aluminium and also two types of inconel titanium and since last year we also offer a copper alloy. If you would ask if there is any special know-how about one of these materials, I would say that we mainly produce stainless steel, aluminium and also Inconel is something that we could gain really high expertise over the last year. Just like I have mentioned before, our showcase shows a part that is mounted in a satellite. Now we have the question, why is this part additive or what makes this part additive? Here two points make the difference. First of all, simplification. With a common type of production, our part would consist at least out of three individual components. And therefore, the part was constructed according to additive design requirements. We made the part easier. We put the function into one part. So we only had one part at the end and we could use the design or configure the design according to our additive requirements that we were able to print it with less support and also less distortion or stress. Secondly, we have a small quantity of parts. So all in all, it was about 10, 10 parts that we had to produce. And if we have small quantities, the additive manufacturing can be really efficient. But on the other hand, we are really fast. And this is what it's important about in prototyping of small quantities of parts. Just to show you one more thing that we were changing regarding this part before it was ready for production. You can see the green marked area here was in the final design of the additive part. Before we changed that region, it was only a flat end with a 90 degree overhang. 
and so we um, told our customer to change this region to a 45 degree angle that we only have a 45 degree overhang and this gives us the chance to produce this region of the part without supports and at the end we had a really good part only with supports towards the base plate and therefore we could achieve good surface qualities almost all over the whole surface of the component. And by the way, a small hint, in additive manufacturing we can only produce overhangs bigger than 45 degrees without using supports. Of course there are some materials where we could go lower but this is always a hint or a checklist that should be checked if you're planning to produce the additive part. We need surfaces or overhangs over 45 degrees for printing. The last pre-processing step is the FEM simulation of the part before we put it on the base plate or on the printer. Therefore we use um, software from ANSYS. This gives us the chance to uh, do a process and part optimization regarding the initiation of preventive, preventive activities before production. So we can check our supports, we can check our orientation. Um, and of course we can see if there are any regions of the part that pr produce high stress or high distortions and we can therefore use a compensated STL file that we are able to print a part without stress and distortion. Here you can see a result that we get as an example out of the FEM simulation. You can see the colorful marked regions where we could get some problems and in the 45 degree angle you see that there will be a little more rough surfaces than in the other parts but from 45 degrees just like I told before we are able to print without supports and then we have to do the surface treatment afterwards. You could also see this in the video before. One big problem in the production process of additive manufacturing are blade crashes. So if we have big distortions in regions of parts, they come out of the powder bed and then our um, plate that brings every layer of powder into the production process layer by layer uh, crashes this part this region that has these big distortions and the whole process stops. With ANSYS or our FEM simulation we have the chance to locate these regions and we see in the simulation before if there will be a crash or not. So within this part everything was okay and therefore we were ready for printing. I won't go too deep into the production process but I want to show you an overview slide just in case there hasn't been any deeper contact to this kind of production. The laser powder bed fusion process starts by slicing the 3D file data into layers. In our case one layer is 50 micrometers thick. Um, this creates a 2D image of each layer of the part. For every slice of the data file one layer of powder is then evenly distributed using a coder onto the substrate plate. You can see the substrate plate um, in grey color on that image. After applying one layer, each 2D slice of the part geometry um, is fused by selectively melting the powder provided by a 400 watt laser. In our case, we use the SLM280 with 400 watt laser systems. To make this explanation even more clear, um, every slice of the part is marked in red color on the image. The whole process takes place inside a chamber containing a tightly controlled atmosphere of inert gas. In our case we use argon. The whole cycle then of providing and melting powder is repeated layer after layer until the part is completed in the end which you can see on the right hand side. 
To keep it really easy, the whole process is a repetition of recoating, melting, recoating, melting and so on, while the substrate blade is moving down into set direction and the part grows. Before we come to an end, I want to show one more thing. At 3D LaserTruck we have the possibility to do our own material development. We constantly improve and optimize our printing parameters. And in addition to that, we are equipped to implement new materials on customer request or if the company sees a high potential in one kind of material. For you as a potential customer of our company, this means that every material that gets ordered has, a, has proved material properties regarding porosity, surface quality, the mechanical properties for sure. We also do support structures, optimizations, and we make sure that every material gets calibrated for FEM simulation, that we are able to use the advantages we get through this system for every material that we offer to our customers. Here's an example for a parameter optimization we did for Inconel. We get templates from SLM solutions to make the materials printable. After the parameter went through the whole process, we could improve the material density from 99.79% to 99.95%. So you can see there's always room for improvement and we do this for every material so we are sure that we reach the highest possible quality we could get. So this was it for today. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the talk and now we come to the point where we can answer your questions. So if there are any questions, don't hesitate to still ask them in the chat function. We will now go on with the discussion and see if we can find some answers to what you were asking about.